physics, in some cases, is the art of dividing materials. Here in the Jordanian city of Salt, scientists are working to bring together people from different backgrounds and nationalities. Welcome to Sesame, the first major synchrotron light device in the Middle East. So this is the main hall of Sesame where we can find the great ring where electrons are being fired and produce light. Uh, synchrotrons is uh, built out of uh, three main uh, parts. One is the microtron, where you start to accelerate the electron, a booster ring where you accelerate them much, much further, and then a storage ring where the electron actually goes around and around, and every time that you bend the electron beam by magnets, it's a radiating, uh, a radiating photon, radiating uh, uh, electromagnetic waves. Sesame is a regional project which includes members of countries such as Israel, Iran, Pakistan, Jordan, Turkey, Cyprus, the Palestinian Authority and Egypt. Each country contributes funds and manpower. The particle accelerator will provide a platform for a variety of research, from physics to archaeology. But the side effects of Sesame are no less important. It's going to give uh, uh, tremendous uh, uh, opportunities to the research community of this uh, region. The history of Sesame goes back to the 1990s. The first session took place in 1995, a few weeks after the assassination of former Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. You see Palestinians, Israelis, you see Jordanians, Egyptians, standing a moment of silence. To me, uh, I get excited even when I, when I talk about it now. It was a very, very special moment. Over the years, the project knew many ups and downs, and parallel the social, economic and political changes the region has passed. In 2010, the Mavi Mamar incident occurred. IDF soldiers raided a flotilla of Turkish activists on their way to Gaza Strip and killed 10 activists. The event sent Israel-Turkey relations into a tailspin and also cast a huge shadow over Sesame, a project in which both countries are involved. A delegate of a certain country, which to my mind did not play there on that moment a positive role, actually brought in politics into the meeting. Uh, he insisted that we uh, debate and come out with a declaration that, uh, which uh, condemns Israel for what happened on the Marmara a few hours ago. So I stood up and I said, I'm going to leave if, if this continues because personally I'm going not to waste my time in, in another UN-like forum and I don't think the State of Israel will be interested to continue in the project. Instead of the debate just stopping, uh, the person whom, who wanted the condemnation looked at Ulker Dinzer, which was a Turkish delegate, and said, what do you say about that? And that was again a watershed moment. And you don't know who Ulker Dinzer, Ulker Dinzer is, you never heard of him. But at that moment, he saved Sesame. Despite the difficulties, the project is taking shape and will be officially launched in May 2017. We had to work on very difficult uh, uh, circumstances, but yet we circumvented that. And uh, we are happy and proud today that uh, mid of this month, we are commissioning the storage ring. May next year, Sesame will be fully commissioned with two beam lines. It's perhaps the only place in the world where Iranians and Israelis can share ideas and have an open discussion. Members of the project express their hope that Sesame might promote peace and succeed where politicians fail. Even uh, with, the, with many problems going on in the regions, and yeah, but still, it's a hope for us to unite us in, I mean, under one umbrella of science. However, not everyone subscribes to this point of view. We have a student and he has a scholarship and he wants to travel outside to Europe. But unfortunately, he didn't get a visa or a permission to pass the borders. So the question when we go back to our colleagues in academia and we tell them, please try to help the student because they know that he's absolutely an academic person and they cannot. What's the benefit that we get? Nothing. In 1001 nights, the phrase open sesame was used as a magic password to open the treasure cave. Here in the Jordanian capital, experts hope to find the magic word not just for a breakthrough in science, but also for a bridge to cross cultures, religions and politics in the divided region. Ui Shapira, I24 News, Amman.